Hello and welcome to this special edition of Agenda tonight. We're looking at the latest World Bank report. India says it's disappointed after India barely moved one spot in the business ranking out of 190 countries evaluated by the World Bank. India came in at 130, over 55% uh, in the rankings. New Zealand tops the chart with over 87%. A disappointed Commerce Minister has said the World Bank survey does not factor in all reform measures that have been put in place and also things like GST, bankruptcy codes, etc. will help change that ranking. But all is not gloom or is it? Data over the last few years shows that even though the rank has only gone up by one point, India has seen a steady rise in the ease of doing business, barring a dip ahead of the general election. So how should we really read this new report? How does the latest one square up with the Prime Minister's promise of putting India in the top 50 countries in the world when it comes to the ease of doing business? Well, joining me to talk about this further, we have with us in the studio MK Venu, senior journalist. We have Satvik Varma, corporate lawyer and a columnist. We're also being joined from their residence uh, by uh, Vikram Singh, uh, who uh, Vikram Singh Mehta of uh, Brookings India, the chairperson of Brookings India, and by economist DK <coughs> Joshi from Mumbai. He's the chief economist of Crystal. So uh, let's uh, just get all our guests in and their views uh, up first. Uh, MK Venu, if I can just uh, start by asking you to help us understand this uh, particular report. You know, uh, India being 130, they're saying it's moved up one point from last year, whereas last year it was 130 as well. So how, it, how does the ranking really work and what does it mean for uh, the data provided, this, this is also about a survey of about 15 to 17 cities across the country. So what are the parameters that we're looking at and how accurately should we be looking at this report? See, the World Bank uh, looks at uh, a range of parameters uh, which essentially tries to assess the ease of doing business uh, across uh, India. And uh, <coughs> these parameters essentially uh, relate to, well, s starting a business, uh, uh, and the the ease with which businesses can be put in place, the, the ease, the regulatory, uh, the, the regulatory issues, tax related issues, infrastructure, and these are some of the broad uh, uh, broad factors that that they take into account. Now you may you may dispute uh, some of the factors that the World Bank uses because they they use a system uh, uh, which which you could describe as one uh, size fit all uh, kind of system. Uh, and um, in India's case, uh, uh, the World Bank, uh, uh, as you've just said, uh, the latest survey shows that we, we've just moved uh, one notch up and uh, Nirmala Sitaraman has expressed disappointment. Now, uh, to some extent, she's right in saying that some of the reforms that the government did uh, have not been taken into account by the World Bank <coughs> because the survey was done probably before that. Yeah. And one of that is uh, <coughs> uh, a law which India has passed uh, on ease of, uh, 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 e ease of you know, closing businesses like insolvency uh, bank and bankruptcy code, which will kick in by the end of this financial year. They said the, the government is planning to set up a fast track court for that. Now, if that happens, uh, I think we <coughs> we could go down a few notches uh, further. Uh, uh, we could improve a few notches okay. further. Okay. All right. But 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 overall, uh, problems remain fundamentally in India. It, it is still a problem to set up businesses, to get land. The land so, issue is still there. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Minu, let's just get uh, Vikram Singh Mehta as well into this. So, uh, uh, Mr. Mehta, thanks for joining us. You know, w there are many ways that people will interpret a report. Some people say that the parameters are not uh, relevant as far mm -hmm. as India is concerned. Today, the government has expressed a level of disappointment, uh, saying that they haven't taken into consideration the reforms that have been put in place, and there will be a trickle-down effect. Things are getting easier. Uh, how do you see uh, this report? How do you feel it should be analyzed? Is there room for skepticism or uh, is it actually really uh, a, a, an incorrect report given the fact that growth is uh, rising steadily? Well, the first point I make is that uh, it was a mistake for the Prime Minister to have actually set himself a target over which he has no control. The reason is that this particular uh, index is an average of 10 sub-indices, and most of those sub-indices 
are controllable, are not controllable by the central government. They rest on the cooperation of the state governments. So, for instance, registering a property <coughs> requires the state government. Mm -hmm. uh, getting electricity connections requires the state government. Yeah. Uh, paying of taxes, like stamp duty and so on, requires the state government. So, in one sense, this, uh, this is a, a, you know, a target <coughs> that's very difficult to achieve. Having said this, I think the government should take some comfort some, that the trend uh, on, on those three or four indices over which they have full control, such as the starting of business or securing of construction permits or accessing electricity, have in fact improved, cons not significantly except for electricity, but at least the, they've improved. So to that extent, uh, the government should be saying, okay, we are on the right track because that is perhaps what will eventually at some point result in the ease of doing business becoming a material factor. Um, I personally don't <clears> really, uh, you know, uh, I personally don't hold much of a candle for all of these quantitative indices because <clears> they do not reflect the complexity of our federal structure. <clears> and uh, it, as I said, they do not allow for any one political or economic entity to control this index. But having said this, uh, yes, it's a bit of a disappointment. I completely agree with Venu that the problems of doing business in this country are huge, yeah. and uh, they will remain huge until we address some of the systemic issues, such as acquisition of land, uh, the digitization of data, right. and of course, the issue of petty corruption. In fact, land has also been a huge issue. Satvik Varma, uh, come in on this because, you know, the point that uh, Vikram Mehta is also making that th this was per perhaps uh, not a promise the Prime Minister should have made because it's not something he can control. And this whole issue of the cent central mm -hmm. government versus state governments and how there are different approaches and different realities uh, in our complex federal structure. So I, I, I completely agree with what Vikram said. I think they are a lot of peculiarities and their complexities which need to be taken into account. Uh, purely from a legal perspective, I think some of the parameters that the survey conducts and, and that, that I have here, uh, I think some of the questions, as Venu talked about, that uh, there isn't a one-size-fits-all. For example, uh, Maya, if I may take, uh, there is a, a column called the protection of minority interests in which we've dropped. Huh. Now, I find that very surprising because you know, as someone whose practice focuses on commercial law, we have a new Companies Act, we have a new Insolvency Act. Under the new Companies Act, we have a new Company Law Tribunal, a new Company Law Appellate Tribunal, hmm. which are new courts that have been formulated. We have a new Commercial Court Bill. We have a new Arbitration Code. We have, uh, we have um, uh, you know, we have so many new statutes that have come out, all of which that are intended to protect the minority interest. Hmm. Therefore, when, when we have these new legislations that come out and we yet drop, there's a little bit of a question and, and a question mark because I don't know how that happens, one. Two, there is a second column that says enforcing contracts. Now, I, I picked out the details of that and there were certain questions that the survey asks, uh, some of which the answers are wrong. For example, it, the question that's asked is, is there a refund of court fee if a mediation takes place in a dispute. Okay. The, the questionnaire notes no, which is factually incorrect because right. we have a special court fee act that provides for a refund. Hmm. There's a special column that th there's a question that asked on whether we can make electronic filings. In fact, the Delhi High Court requires on the commercial side all filings to be electronic. Okay. So I think we really need to, and I think that the government and the Ministry of Commerce is doing that, but we need to go back, have a discussion, look at these questions, make sure that some of these questions are properly answered. You know, one really wonders at some times on who is really the ones answering these questions and yeah. who are the data point, you know, where do they I, get their data okay. points from? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I, you know, I want to make a point here. As well, yeah. and India, India is like 30, 30 countries, right, the states. Yeah. You might find a situation where if you do disaggregate, uh, Telangana may be doing way, way better than some other states. So actually what we need to do is, we need to do ease of doing business state, state by state. You can't have a, a national indicator of India. It's not impractical in my view, because la as Vikram said, land acquisition is states. After Mr. Modi, after this government failed to uh, legislate uh, a national land acquisition law, right. they left it to the states. 
Now, uh, how many BJP states have managed to put in place a new uh, a land, uh, you know, regime, law, mm. uh, legal regime, mm -hmm. which which really makes it easy for business? I, I don't know. Maybe one or two. Uh, and there are, but other non uh, BJP states which have done much better, non BJP, non Congress states. So so in a way, you really have to do a disaggregated study. And you'll f you'll have some fascinating results. You can't do a weighted average uh, of 30 of states. Of 30 states. In any case, uh, from what we understand, that uh, this particular uh, survey uh, is looking at uh, Delhi, Mumbai, and some other big cities that as well. So is a that itself is a limitation. D K Joshi, uh, well, let's bring you in on this. Uh, is is it? I mean, the disappointment that is being expressed by our ministers today on this report, uh, is it because we're putting a lot of stock in international rankings and perhaps that's misplaced? We shouldn't be looking at rankings specifically. We're talking about the complexities of federal structure. Venu is just making the point that, you know, perhaps this is a study that should be done on a state-by-state -state basis because some states are easier than others depending on uh, their own systems in place. So why are we giving so much of a platform and so much importance to these rankings? No, I think uh, global rankings are important. I mean, they, uh, they are proximate. They are not very accurate, I would say. They can't cover everything, but still they give you a sense of, uh, uh, of, of I mean, where things are moving. I mean, so I would look at it more in terms of direction. And uh, I think if you look at the four international rankings that have come out recently, uh, the most dramatic was the World Economic Forums, where I think India has moved 32 notches. That's a perception survey. And I think that tells you that people are getting more optimistic about, uh, about competitive, improving competitiveness of India. And I think uh, if you look at the corruption index that came out of the Transparency International, India has again improved there. Yeah. In the World Bank uh, Logistics Index, India has moved from, uh, I think, uh, 54th rank in 2014 to 34th rank. So all I'm trying to say mm -hmm. is that the, if you put all the pieces together, things are moving in, in the right direction. And I think uh, p over a period of time, I think if government relentlessly pursues what, whatever they have, whether it is goods and services tax or it is, uh, uh, it is uh, bankruptcy code, I think they will bear fruit and they will have a reflection on the ease of doing business as well. So I think this should, uh, I mean, there's nothing to fret about uh, what, what came out from the ease of doing business. Yeah. I think you have to take a more holistic view. That's what, and as far as the state level thing is concerned, the World Bank used to do the state level uh, ranking uh, uh, in Indi for India, right. and they have it, uh, And now I think it is being done by DIPP. I think every uh, every half year they come mm -hmm. out with a report which ranks the states according to the efforts they have made in the in in the quarter or the or the or the, or the first half of the year and the second half of the year. So that is also being parallelly done. I think, and that shows a very different picture. Right, okay. Uh, I mean, so across states. We'll Some take a states break. are doing well, others are not. We'll take a very quick break at that, but we have to come back to lots more on this because I think the general consensus is that the, the report needs to look at many more other factors as well. The survey needs to look at many more other factors. What exactly those factors should be if we're going to be looking at this international ranking as uh, some sort of indicator of how we're doing? Uh, let's try and talk about what those should be after a quick break. We'll come back in a minute. Welcome back to Agenda. We're discussing the World Bank's uh, Ease of Doing Business Survey where India has ranked 130. Uh, also interesting that the, the Wall Street Journal, in fact, in doing its analysis of this report, has said, uh, pointed out that this report uh, places countries like Indonesia, Pakistan and Brunei above India. Uh, Venu, very quick response to that. Well, I don't want to invite some uh, <laughs> charge of sedition, but Pakistan indeed has done very well uh, also because Pakistan is a, is a small country so if they do the five six things yeah uh, and just roll the red carpet for businesses to come and set up uh, uh, operations it's it's easy but in India as I said 30 states land laws Com complexity la labor laws so, la labor laws yeah. and, and somebody said GST now mind you 
uh, Nirmala Sitaraman said that GST will fact, uh, reflect later. Yeah. But the kind of GST that they're talking about, five rates, it's and with one twenty. Another we'll add says, further complexity. Yeah. So Vikram Mehta, if I may ask you, if we are to accept international rankings, as DK Joshi pointed out, we need those as as parameters or benchmarks. What should we be looking at as as factors that surveys like this should be taking into consideration? Well, the first thing I just want to say is that we should not forget that, you know, this is all relative. These rankings are relative. Hmm. We may transform the operating environment, the business environment, but if 150 countries do it faster or do it better, we will still rank lower than them. So we just need to recognize this is not an absolute, this is a relative uh, uh, rank. Second is if we really want to uh, make a material difference to businessmen, investing in this country, we have to ease uh, the certain basics like starting a business. Today, uh, it still takes 15 different approvals to start a business. Uh, I remember when I started the business 25 years ago, it took a few months. Now it takes, a, let's say, a month or so to get it registered. But even that one month is too much hmm. because you have to get a DIN, you have to get a seal, you have to incorporate the company, then you have to go to the states and get your registration for five or six different taxes and so on and so forth. So those are issues that can certainly be harmonized quickly. Uh, then getting construction permits, acqu acquisition of land, right. accessing electricity and other infrastructure, water, sewage. Now those are some of the basics that we should be looking at. It's only after that should we be asking the question, is it easy to get credit? Uh, should we be looking at, you know, safeguarding minority interests? What about payment of taxes? Those are criteria, those are sort of parameters that, yes, the World Bank can set out, but from our standpoint, in order to move materially forward, we should be focused on four or five major issues that facilitate the entry of a company right. into this country and the oper operationalization of that business. That's what I think should be the index that we should be focused on. Okay. Or also, uh, DK Joshi, uh, in terms of a lay person also trying to understand this, one of the things that uh, uh, Nirmala Sita Raman said in response to this report was that the, uh, the trickle-down effect of certain reforms are taking their due time. Can you just explain to us what that means? Well, what it means is, I think, uh, to India's credit, I think it's not focused on, uh, on, on so much on monetary and fiscal policy to push growth up. I think it's relied more on structural reforms. Huh. And we all know that structural reforms are onerous. They take time. Even if you take, let's say, the, the bankruptcy code, to materially have an impact, it's going to take three to five years. And similarly, for goods and services tax, if it is properly structured, I think you should see the positive effects uh, after two to three years. So I think the implementation phase, so uh, right now I think most of the things are work in progress. Right. And I think they have not materially impacted things on the ground. I think that's what it means. I mean that it is going, to, it is moving in the right direction, but it's going to take time to show up in uh, in these indices as this well. This means that it may take three years for us to really come below 50. Below, below uh, 130, right. Satvik, very quickly, we have 30 seconds to wrap, but as a lawyer who's helping uh, companies also set up, uh, what is the one thing you would like done differently immediately? I think the, I, I would agree with Vikram. The one thing I would like is that there has to be a greater clarity for a company that's coming in right. on what the process is to set up okay. and to facilitate that, get a single window. Yeah. And also, you know, we are a com country that relies so much on technology. Maybe some of these rules and regulations and e put in each state, put let, them up online, look at a foreign investor on. yeah. knows. And one of the quick points I'm going to make, uh, because you asked a question in the, in the section before the break on how much can we rely on these yeah. indices. We need to also consider that despite these indices, the FDI flow into India has continuously Continue increased. Please, yeah. In and fact, therefore, that's one of the, that's that, one of that the is point. a reflection we're, of yeah, the confidence that foreign investors have to a limited right, extent. Right, we're completely out of time, but that's an interesting point to leave it on because, as we said at the beginning, uh, the rank is one thing, but it doesn't necessarily reflect the steady Correct. growth that we have been seeing in the economy. Thanks very much, all of you, for joining me on Agenda tonight. That's all we have time for. Good night. <laughs>